Fasting is not about calorie restriction. It's about creating a hormonal environment conducive to fat burning. Okay, welcome back to the Obesity Project. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Shankman. I'm an oral and maxillofacial surgeon who has dedicated themselves to uh, teaching about obesity, about insulin, about insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and many other chronic disorders. Uh, welcome to uh, this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today, episode 24, we're talking about what breaks a fast and what doesn't. And you can kind of see a little bit of it behind me. Um, so black coffee, bulletproof coffee, bone broth, protein shakes, what actually breaks a fast? And if you're fasting for fa fat loss, or insulin sensitivity, you need to understand what raises insulin, not just what contains calories. So it's not just about calories, it's about insulin. And in this video today, we're gonna dive deep into what truly breaks a fast, exploring, exploring not only what you can consume while fasting, but also why certain things disrupt the hormonal benefits of fasting, especially insulin regulation and fat burning. So what is, fasting really for? What what are we using it for? So fasting isn't just about eating zero calories. It's about keeping insulin levels low to allow the body to burn stored fat. So if you remember, uh, when insulin levels are high, it's telling the body to drive the, that sugar, uh, that blood glucose into the cells and store it away for later use. So, you know, much of what I have learned has come from uh, a, a great book. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it already from Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, it's called The Obesity Code. He has a great quote that I want to share with you guys. Fasting is not about calorie restriction. It's about creating a hormonal environment conducive to fat burning. And uh, so we have some studies that support this uh, sort of theory or this, uh, this statement. Of course, Dr. Fung's book uh, is the first uh, citing uh, back in 2016, he wrote the book. But uh, there was a study done by um, Halberg et al. Uh, in 2018, where they demonstrated that low insulin levels are the key predictor of reversal of type 2 diabetes during fasting protocols. So uh, we're going to share lots of science, lots of, um, you know, proof uh, for the things that I'm uh, quoting today. So let's talk about what definitely breaks a fast. Uh, these are things that increase insulin and stop fat burning in their, in its tracks. So number one, protein shakes, especially whey. So not saying that protein shakes are bad. Of course, there, there's uh, plenty of uh, potential benefit to whey protein. However, from a fasting standpoint or from an insulin standpoint, they have a very high insulin index. So eating uh, or drinking those protein shakes, uh, particularly whey protein, uh, will result in very, very high insulin levels. And there was an amazing study that was done back in 1997 by Holt et al., uh, where they demonstrated that whey protein actually spikes insulin even more than white bread. So we've got to look at insulin levels. We've got to look at the foods and what they're doing. It's not just about calories and it's not just about carbs by themselves, right? So let's get to carbohydrates and sugar. Of course, these spike glucose the most, right? Tremendously and create a hyperinsulinemia or a high or elevated insulin response. And there was a great study by uh, Ludwig uh, Ds et al. Uh, in 2002, uh, where they demonstrated that high glycemic index foods, so foods that raise blood sugar really quickly, um, increase hunger and fat storage due to insulin spikes. So this is proof in the pudding, so to speak, that uh, you know eating carbohydrates, eating sugary uh, foods will definitely uh, raise blood sugar and increase that insulin response. And we kind of already knew that. We've talked about this many, many times before. Or certainly full meals, snacks of any kind, even small snacks, like an example would be just a, a few crackers can actually break the fast. So these are things that are pretty common, pretty obvious. 
uh, I think most people would certainly expect that this would break your fast. You know, you're eating, you're getting calories, you're getting sugar, you're getting insulin spikes. Uh, so let's talk about some of the gray areas. What may be okay? Um, and so these are uh, basically low calorie and low insulin generating foods uh, that should be used somewhat strategically because they're not without any uh, negative side effects. So we got to certainly hit on the first and foremost, which is black coffee. So black coffee is believed by most people to, to be totally okay on a fast. And I don't disagree necessarily, uh, but you have to be careful. So you do get a slight rise in cortisol levels uh, from drinking coffee, which may enhance fat burning and suppress appetite, which are, are, of course are good things, but um, there is basically no insulin response in most people. And that's the big takeaway item. There are a small subset of people that will get a small, not a tremendous, but a small insulin response from drinking black coffee. And of course, we have to, uh, you know, drink it black with no sugar. You have to drink it black with no additional, uh, you know, addition of cream or creamers, because that's, of course, going to spike the insulin. And there was a great study by Van Dam uh, et al. in 2004, uh, which demonstrated that coffee consumption is associated with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes. So uh, it certainly is okay to think about doing on a fast, but, you know, again, a little bit of a gray area. Um, the next one we're going to talk about, I think most people in general do believe that this is uh, safe to do while fasting, and this is uh, to drink tea, um, whether it be a green tea, herbal tea, black tea, really doesn't seem to make a difference. This, honestly, I think, and I'm a coffee drinker, I love coffee, um, but this one, I, I do think that tea is pretty probably a better solution uh, on a fast. There's virtually zero insulin response with any of the teas. So green tea, herbal tea, black tea doesn't make a difference. All respond the same way in the body. Uh, zero in uh, virtually, not, not zero, but virtually zero insulin response. Um, they contain uh, uh, chemicals called catechins, which may support fat oxidation. And if you remember correctly, uh, fat oxidation is the breakdown of fat and the utilization of fat uh, to create energy. Uh, one of the best things in green tea is something called EGCG, which stands for, and I'm going to probably butcher this name, but I'm going to do my best, epigallocatechin 3 gallate. Uh, so that's what ECGC stands for. And it is the most abundant and potent catechin in green tea. And it's basically a type of plant compound known as a polyphenol. And these polyphenols are associated with various health benefits. And ECGC is known for its antioxidant properties, which help protect cells from damage caused by free radicals. And really the antioxidant um, effect is what we're looking for in, in the teas. It's also believed to have anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer and heart healthy properties. And, um, a study that supported uh, this information is Herschel et al. Uh, back in 2009. So we've talked about black coffee, okay to do, uh, not without any consequence, but certainly a gray area, but most people consider it perfectly fine to do. Uh, tea, same thing. Uh, the third category or the third thing that we're gonna talk about is lemon water or apple cider vinegar. Both of these uh, are pretty similar in terms of their response. So both of these have less than five calories and they do not spike insulin, which of course is the main driver for what we're looking for. Um, apple cider vinegar is actually very useful. I used it prior to my carnivore diet. Um, anytime I ate, uh, actually not apple cider vinegar, I just use vinegar, but vinegar of any type, including apple cider, um, <clears throat> does, uh, reduce post-meal glucose. And so um, if you eat, if you plan on eating some starch or you plan on eating some uh, whole carbohydrate as part of your meal, if you're on a low carb or keto diet, but you're eating some vegetables, uh, then apple cider vinegar prior to uh, is very effective at reducing the glucose spike as a result of those uh, carbohydrates that you're eating. 
And it was a, uh, a study by Johnson et al. in 2004, which demonstrated this. Um, and there is some evidence that both lemon water or apple cider vinegar may actually improve insulin se sensitivity. And that's what we're really driving for. We're trying to knock down that insulin resistance and make our cells, make our bodies more insulin sensitive. Okay, so we've talked about what definitely uh, breaks a fast. We talked about what is sort of a somewhat gray area, but most people consider it pretty okay to do. Now, what probably breaks a fast, and then we'll, you know, uh, we'll get to some other stuff, but what probably breaks a fast are first artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners stimulate what's called the cephalic insulin response. It's sort of your brain expecting you to get some sugar because you're tasting something sweet. And so the, the brain actually does trigger an increased insulin response, <clears throat> even if the artificial sweeteners have absolutely no sugar, uh, or the artificial sweetener itself does not seem to trigger an insulin response, but your brain expecting something sweet uh, will uh, certainly trigger the insulin response. And there was a study to demonstrate this uh, by Swithers in 2013, where artificial sweeteners were proven to uh, promote metabolic dysregulation. Um, there was another study, I actually don't know, I don't remember which study this was, but they took um, people that had um, insulin resistance and normal healthy people, lean people without any kind of uh, type two diabetes. And um, they actually gave those folks uh, solutions with artificial sweetener in it, no calories, no carbohydrates, no sugar. And uh, they actually measured the insulin response in those people. And all of the subjects actually had an insulin response. But of course, as you could you know, very well expect, the type two diabetics had a larger um, insulin spike. So artificial sweeteners, probably not a great idea. You will get an insulin response to those artificial sweeteners, which uh, is what we're trying to avoid uh, to continue our fasting protocol. Um, diet sodas may actually increase insulin in some people, despite no calories, maybe somewhat related to the artificial sweeteners again, but <clears throat> there was, um, a study in 2013 by Pepino and et al, uh, where suc sucralose, uh, was demonstrated to, uh, increase insulin levels by 20% in obese individuals. So, um, we can't, just think, okay, diet soda is perfectly fine because there's no calories. Uh, it will trigger an insulin um, increase in some people. Again, not everybody. And then for those of you, and, and this, I fall into this category. Uh, for those of you that are uh, bulletproof coffee people or put MCT oil or creamer into your coffee or into your drinks, um, although they are low carb, fat triggers a, a, a satiety hormone called cholecystokinin, uh, which not only does create satiety, but also does have uh, some um, response or some effect on insulin secretion and does increase insulin secretion. So not really suitable if the goal is strict uh, autophagy or if you're trying to maintain very low insulin levels. So for instance, if you're trying to reverse type two diabetes, if you're trying to uh, reboot the immune system, if you're trying to uh, get into a state of autophagy and and you know have your body cleaning up those uh, old proteins and those you know dying cells, then um, you definitely want to stay away from the bulletproof coffee. Uh, if your goal is to provide some energy uh, and you know continue down a weight loss journey, but you're not metabolically ill, uh, then it may be okay. Uh, but it also can uh, decrease or slow down your weight loss uh, effects as well. So you just have to be super careful. I would just recommend avoiding this uh, in a fasted state. So let's talk a little bit about testing and bioavailability um, and bioindividuality. So everybody, every body <laughs> reacts differently. And so there are ways to kind of identify, like for instance, I think it's over here. There, there we go. Uh, uh, so hard to kind of point to things in in mirror. Um, 
But there are ways to measure your personal individual effect of like something like drinking coffee or having bulletproof, uh, you know, coffee. Um, so you can uh, use a continuous glucose monitor or a CGM, which will allow you using some software on your phone to track your glucose and uh, your, your glucose levels. It's not going to track insulin, but will track your glucose levels. Um, and then, of course, you can do some glucose testing uh, via a finger prick uh, about 30 to 60 minutes uh, after you consume any of these items that you want to see what kind of response you get. Now, you know, you if, if you're not having something that has glucose in it, um, you may not see much of a, a difference. Uh, but, you know, uh, insulin, increased insulin levels will, uh, uh, you know, may may cause uh, some release of glucose uh, into the bloodstream. So, um, you know, there may be a, somewhat of a spike. And so summary uh, of today's video and, and, you know, what you should eat and what you shouldn't or what you should have and what you shouldn't, um, it really kind of depends on what your effect is that you're looking for. So is your goal fat loss? Or is it insulin reversal or type 2 diabetes re reversal? So if your goal is fat loss, then you want to stick to black coffee. Um, you can uh, do some additives. But if your goal is insulin reversal and reversal of type 2 diabetes and metabolic disease, then you've got to stick to the black coffee. You can't add the butter. You can't add the MCT oils. And, you know, probably better just to stick with water. Uh, if you're one of those people that actually does respond uh, and get an increased insulin level with black coffee. Um, you, basically, you want to avoid anything that raises insulin, even if it's calorie free. So fasting is about hormonal healing, not just starvation, uh, is a quote by Dr. Jason Fung. So what do you include in your fast? And uh, please comment below. Let's compare. I used to do bulletproof coffee. I put MCT uh, cream in uh, in my coffee, not realizing that was actually breaking my fast. Uh, so, you know, go ahead and put in the comments below what you do and whether you think uh, that makes a difference for you. And then certainly tag a fasting buddy who's been asking, you know, does this, if I add this to, you know, my morning ritual, is that going to break my fast? every morning. Uh, so if you have someone that's been asking questions, certainly uh, refer them to this video, but also, um, you know, tag them uh, and let them, you know, watch the video uh, for themselves. All right. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys uh, giving me your time. I hope you learned a little something. Um, did this on a Sunday night after a busy, busy weekend, uh, but I'm going to post it Monday morning and I hope you uh, enjoyed the little uh, stint we had on fasting and we're going to get to some other items, some other topics in the next few days. So stay tuned, uh, like, share and comment, subscribe, uh, do all the things that you know to do on social media and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.